What's up YouTube? Currently on my way to get uh, my girlfriend Jasmine because we're going to be going to Go Ape today. Hopefully going to get some good footage of that so I can show you kind of a, a point of view shot of what we were seeing when we were climbing up there. But yeah, got a voucher, voucher kind of gift card thing for my birthday from my brother and sister for uh, two people to go go aping. So I got that in January when my birthday is and it expires in January but I figured going summertime will probably be the best. So right now today we're going to go there. It's about two o'clock. I think the, the actual time's booked in for free so got to get it there a bit early. So I'm going to go pick up Jasmine now. Hopefully record some good footage and yeah I'll just try and get as much as I can for you guys. Hope you enjoy this video. probably would have guessed that I didn't manage to record anything on Go8 yesterday but I did get a few pictures. The thing that happened is I went up there with my camera or went to go up there when they opened the harness on me and they said that unless I wanted to purchase a lanyard for I think it was four or five pound that would actually go around my neck and kind of aim forward so it'd be a good point of view shot I couldn't take it up there and then I figured it's gonna require two hands to actually climb along it so I'm probably better off just you know, taking my phone out a couple of times, taking some pictures of like the, the route, so hope you enjoyed the few pictures that I was able to send through and put in the video, but yeah, all in all it was good and I would recommend going there if you're a bit of an adrenaline junkie. The zip line and the Tarzan swing is probably the most fun part of the whole thing. The rest of it's just like really wobbly and a bit scary, but if you don't mind heights then it's a good thing to go to and if you do mind heights, it's a good way of getting over your fear. So to my brother and sister, if you're watching this video, thank you so much for the birthday present. So yeah, I'm just going to show you what I've been doing this morning. Right, so I've been doing a bit of meal prepping this morning. We've got this big Tupperware here, medium one there, and then a little small one up here. This size is on it, but it's just what I could find lying around the kitchen. Um, but what I've got in each of them is some chilli chicken, just normal chicken breast with chilli powder seasoned on it. Some broccoli, if you can see that there, and some rice. I'll actually show you inside. So in the small one here, I've just got like an even amount of everything. In the medium one, I've got a little bit more chicken and kind of a low level amount of rice. And then this last one, I've got loads of rice. Not too much chicken and not too much broccoli. Make it a little bit easier on myself to just eat throughout the day. So I've just got three Tupperware, so three main meals. But yeah, all good. That's what I've been up to this morning. Uh, just gonna be training in the home gym again today doing back biceps and abs and I'm just going to run you through some of my ab routine in there I'll probably do a commentary over a bit later stay tuned, that'll be in the next clip so I'll see you guys in the gym a little bit later so in the home gym, just before we get started I want to show you the pre-workouts that came the other day got the Icy Blue Raz one, Silicor C4 and same again, different flavour I got some, I think, orange dreamsicle probably going to go with the Icy Blue Raz today just because I know that's a really good one and I can always rely on this one tasting real good so got that also got uh, this top along with another navy top of the same style and the joggers that I'm wearing as well that came around the same time I think the same day maybe the, the next day but yeah I guess you'll see that in the ab routine so without further ado right guys just finished up my back and bicep workout now we're going to move on to abs but before we get started just want to kind of quickly go through a rundown of what different areas of your abs there are and what kind of movements kind of activate each area so so first of all there's two main areas of your abdominal muscles there's some on the inside of your body behind the ones that actually show and then there's the ones that actually show which are the rectus abdominis here so the six pack there and the uh, lower ab bit this kind of a big chunk of like one pack it's right at the bottom of the six pack and then at the sides here you've got your obliques and that includes the uh, finger looking uh, top of the obliques there because it's kind of smoother at the lower part of the obliques but as you go up it kind of joins in with your your lats and your serratus anterior so it looks like that finger ribcage look uh, on the upper part of your abs 
So yeah, there's two main groups. There's the inside muscles and there's the outside muscles for your abs. But if you're actually trying to get a six pack look and you're trying to develop those muscles, first of all, you will need lower body fat for them to actually show through. But if you're just interested in building them up. So yeah, if you actually want the muscle mass on your abs, then you're gonna want to train your rectus abdominis. So that's the six pack here. Everyone's is a little bit different. It's not always uh, symmetrical. But yeah, although there is only two of the outer abs that you can train, the obliques and the rectus abdominis here, there are separate ways that you can actually influence different uh, areas that, to be activated. So if you do a really tight crunch where you're trying to imagine dragging your chin towards your stomach, so you're curling in and doing a crunch towards your abs and squeezing them together like that, that's going to do the top part of your abs and also the middle. If you want to do the lower, however, any kind of leg raise movement or knee raise movement is going to help you with isolating that. So this includes hanging leg raises. There's actually usually a machine in the gym, well not a machine, but like a piece of equipment in the gym where you place your arms. It's almost a dip bar. You place your arms on these pads and then you do straight legged leg raises or you do knee raises, whichever ones you feel comfortable doing. Most people um, starting off might not be able to do leg raises, at least not straight leg raises. They might have to start off doing knee raises first just to get stronger in the area. But either works just as fine for the lower ab area. And doing the middle area, although that will kind of be activated along with the leg raises and the crunch, you could also do movements where you're bringing your legs and your torso together. So you'll see later on in the video because I'll demonstrate it because that is part of my ab circuit that I do. But the kind of movement that I'm talking about is, imagine this is a person, this is your torso, these are your legs. Instead of doing a crunch like that and crunching your top abs like that, or doing a leg raiser, raising the bottom part of your body, so the bottom half of your abs, you want to just do one whole crunch. So you're doing both of the two motions I just mentioned at the same time. So bringing your knees towards your chest and bringing your chest towards your knees at the same time. Now with obliques, there's a couple of ways to do it. It's not just raising or crunching. You can actually do uh, both types of movement. You can either you can either do the type of movement where your body is going to be straight, but you're going to be crunching each side uh, individually in order to activate that muscle. So you could do one at a time like that, or you could do uh, both like this and like that and having a rest in between. Or you could do a type of twisting movement. I like these ones the most for obliques because all you really need is a decline bench and a dumbbell plate or a medicine ball. Although you don't actually need either piece of equipment, especially if you're starting off, you can actually do it uh, simply on flat ground on a yoga mat, something like that. Just have your knees elevated off the ground. I'll just demonstrate for you right now knees elevated off the ground and keep your body kind of in a 90 degree angle kind of shape and then you just want to be twisting your torso like that, keeping your legs straight, make sure that you're not rocking uh, back and forward like that and that's going to be a good one for your obliques. Okay, I hope I didn't confuse you guys too much with the way I just described that but going to be recording some footage of the actual exercise now so I can make it a bit clearer for you there because you can actually look at how I'm doing each movement and I'll uh, explain it as I go along. Alright guys, so the order of the videos that will be coming up is the order in which I do my ab routine. So the way I do it, I complete all three of these exercises in a circuit, so it's kind of like one big superset where I'm doing three different exercises which will activate three different areas of my abs, which will be my upper, my lower and my middle abs. I haven't shown you the obliques here, purely because my camera died, but usually I would do them right at the end, and the exercise I'll be doing for that is the one that I actually demonstrated to you at the end of the previous clip where I was talking to you guys about my ab routine. Now, as I say, I'm going to be doing a circuit for this ab routine, and what that means is that after this first exercise that you're seeing here, I'll go straight onto the second one, then onto the third one, then onto the fourth one, doing all of my abs, uh, each different area, and that's basically counting as one set, and I'll do that three times total. Now, because this is abs, doesn't mean I need to train them any differently, or I'm doing a circuit for a particular reason. I just like to do it because it gives me kind of an even pump of everything, and I don't get too tired when it comes to doing obliques last. Everything's just kind of evened out, and I usually train abs at the end of the workout anyway, so I'm already out puff a little bit, so I want to just get them done as much as I can, as quickly as I can. Um, and not be like tired by the time I've completed the first two areas that I want to cover. But let's get started with each exercise. This first one here looks a bit strange, but as I said, 
I'll start off by doing my upper ab first. So being as crunched up as I am, this allows me to target just that area on its own or as much as I can rather than involving all the other ab muscles. So the reason I'm crunching it up so much and the range of motion is so small is because I'm only trying to activate that one tiny bit at the top. And as it's abs, there isn't much range of motion needed anyway, regardless of which area of your abs you're going to be training. So yeah, with this, you need to make sure that your legs are nice and like tightly set up on the ground and you're not involving them at all. You want to keep your back straight and in the same area you can the whole whole time you're doing the movement and the same with your arms you literally want your arms to only be there in order to hold the rope you could also do it you could also do this with a bar of some kind but i find the rope is the most comfortable and most easiest to use but the way i'm actually holding it you can do it in any other way you can hold um you'll see later on me doing a separate exercise holding it slightly different but i only like doing it th this way because it feels most comfortable for me because i can just lock my hands in and by holding the rope above my head as opposed to by the side of my head, it allows me to actually pull my head and the rope and my arms and everything between my legs. So if you notice my legs as well, they're actually a little bit more separated than they will be in this next clip. So if you have a look out for that and the way I'm holding the rope in the next clip, you'll see what it is that I've changed and why. So what I've changed in this one is it's the same exercise again, but as you can see, I'm slightly more elevated off the ground. My hands are by my side holding the rope rather than at the top of my head and kind of all crunched together and the range of motion is slightly different as well rather than curling up into a little ball and being really compact I'm actually a lot straighter with the way I'm doing it and I'm really not twisting my or crunching my torso that much as I was in the other one but this is just so that I can do the middle abs area although it is still one muscle the rectus abdominis is the main bit that is the six pack and the big one pack that you would get from leg raises right at the bottom simply by changing it up and doing it like that holding the rope in a different way I'm going to be doing the middle part of my abs so if you don't want to do this exercise that you're now seeing here which I would usually do for my middle area of the abs you can also adjust the rope and just do a slightly different um, type of rep and slightly different form to better isolate that area but with these ones that you're seeing here just Bear in mind that the most difficult thing about this is keeping your balance. So if you keep your hands planted on this side of the bench that you're seeing there where I've got my hands on uh, the side where my legs are being raised up and you just want to evenly bring up your chest and your legs towards the middle so you're crunching everything together in one big rep. Just keeping your bum on the bench and having that as the kind of pivot point of the movement so you're going back with your torso and you're letting your legs go out forward but keeping them uh, nice and straight and then just crunching together for each rep at the top and then this last one here which is the final part of my circuit excluding the oblique exercise that I'd usually do at the end as well these are leg raises so this is for the lower part of the abs and with these like I said you can do them as knee raises you can do them straight legged raises you can uh, just hold onto a straight bar like a pull up bar and raise your legs like that but I just like to do them laying down here so I can focus purely on the abs and I don't have to worry so much about uh, supporting my weight if I'm hanging off of a bar so these are really simple just keep your upper body relaxed and try to hold onto the bench some way or a rope or a weight maybe just to hold your torso down and then simply raise your legs and keep them as straight as you can you don't need to bring your legs extremely far up or like kick yourself in the head or anything like that, just bring them up until your legs are basically pointing towards the ceiling. And that's it for my ab routine, except for the oblique twists, but I mentioned them a little bit earlier on in the video, so hopefully I was clear enough with that. Thank you guys for watching so much, I'll see you guys in the next video.